What we'll do is we'll just start with a quick uh, round of introduction of each of the panelists and uh, I'll give the mics to them. Uh, in the introduction, I would request if each of you, if you can give a, a quick snapshot of your development specifically, which you've done already, uh, which is operational mall, which is there. And also if there are any specific mall projects which you're developing so that the group here uh, knows exactly what context of the developments which you have done. Uh, should we start with you, Shirang? Uh, Mr. Shirang Sada represents the Sada group. Thanks, Pankaj. We have uh, the first center we developed was about 10 years ago. Uh, small, uh, I mean, I'll, I won't get into how we got there, but it's about a lakh square feet of development. Uh, it's now become the high street of Nasik. And then the second center we developed, uh, called Nasik City Center, it's about 9 lakh square feet of construction, about 5.5 uh, lakh square feet of shopping, uh, and the rest being parking. Uh, we have um, uh, a fair amount of Reliance uh, brands there. We have a fair amount of uh, uh, Kishorji's brands there. Uh, we have Trent there. We have Pantaloon, Big Bazaar, um, Reliance Di Digital, Reliance Trends, uh, lots of vanilla, uh, lots of apparel, Cinemax uh, as the multiplex. Um, it's uh, located reasonably central in Nasik, uh, and that's the development uh, that we uh, spent a lot of time and uh, effort on. Thanks, Shirang. Uh, I have to my left is a gentleman, Mr. Mehboob. He represents the highlight builders from Kerala. Uh, Mehboob, would you like to give us an introduction? Thank you. Um, uh, we developed, uh, basically we are from uh, 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 from the uh, developer's uh, background. We were into uh, residential projects earlier. The first mall uh, um, we built in Calicut, oper is operational last uh, six and a half years. And uh, that was a um, 1.5 lakhs leasable with a 2.5 lakhs built up space. Uh, in fact, that is the first mall, operational mall in Kerala. NDR Kerala state and uh, one of the from the south also that is one of the first few malls uh, among the NDR uh, southern states. Now we are coming up with second mall um, with uh, in two phases uh, that is the uh, first phase uh, is a built up of uh, 7 lakhs and a leasable space of 4 lakhs and uh, in the second phase it is uh, built up of uh, 3 lakh and um, again 6 lakhs, uh, you know, built up a leasable space of 3 lakh and built up space of uh, 6 lakhs. Together uh, it's a uh, 13 lakhs square feet uh, mall built up space with a 7 lakhs leasable space. Uh, first phase is getting uh, operational within uh, 6 months uh, from now and uh, the first mall, uh, the focus mall Calicut uh, which we developed in 6.5 years back, it's from the last six and a half years, barring few months, entire period is 100% leased and uh, running very successfully. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mehboob. Uh, we have on the left of Mr. Mehboob is uh, Vish Mr. Vishwam Mohan. Mr. Vishwam Mohan represents the South Avenue Mall from Jabalpur. Thank you, Pankaj. Good morning, everyone. No, South Avenue Mall is now has now been in operation for about uh, four four and a half years. Uh, it's a 1.2 lakh leasable area mall, and uh, presently we are running at about anywhere between 95 to 100 percent occupancy. The mall uh, when we did it was uh, somewhat on the southern side of town. It was not a city centric mall. And it took us a little time to sort of get it fully into operation. We've got uh, Big Bazaar as the anchor tenant, along with Reliance Digital and Max Fashions. And uh, we've got all the good 
vanilla brands as well and uh, we also have reputed uh, international food brands at present we are also contemplating whether to expand the already existing mall or to create a new mall that's why uh, we are here understanding the new concepts what is going on in the industry thanks uh, vishwa mohan uh, mr mohan uh, to start with you shriyan uh, tell me your family has been in, in a very traditional indian business uh, and been you've been telling me it's been there in seven generations in that business and suddenly you come in one day into the business and you decide to make a mall Uh, so how did it start why did you decide to make a mall what prompted you to do this well uh, there was a house we were moving and there was a house we wanted to sell and we didn't get the right offers from the right people because it was a house there was a sentiment attached to it and we wanted to sell it to a certain profile of people or kind of people uh, and eventually we said okay uh, we'll have to develop it otherwise it's going to lie idle <clears throat> so leaving idle property is also not very because um, this street was becoming like a high street uh, where we used to live on so we did <clears throat> land use study with uh, jrl actually 12 13 years ago maybe more uh, and we identified a demand supply so there was a glut at that time of residential in nasik and there was a glut of commercial in nasik but there was a dearth of entertainment and uh, shopping in nasik so at that time we figured out that this is the only land use that makes sense uh, so we did a lot of consumer studies i come from a bd business and uh, i understand consumer markets well i am not necessarily a real estate developer so therefore we did some consumer studies understood what were people doing on entertainment what was the need of the city we started with a multiplex uh, and then eventually a big bazaar uh, was also Uh, started in that same project and that kind of put nasik on the more organized retail map i think we opened a big bazaar and a multiplex i think the so multiplex opened right after punas but the big bazaar probably opened way before punas did uh, so for a size of nasik for the city like nasik this was a very very early development but it did really well uh, people responded exceedingly well so based on this we figured ki there there might be more to do in the city and about Five years ago, we started our second center, which was again done with a lot of research to understand the market, to understand the traffic patterns, to understand. So, in fact, the second land was bought for the mall based on research. Uh, so, this was not like a land punt or anything. We got into it uh, to to do do the mall, and uh, it's since been doing quite well actually. So, Shriyan. you got into the mall business because you you look into one day sell the house and it didn't you didn't get the right. aspirational uh, value or the buyer for it and you got it by default uh, what we've seen also in a lot of the malls which have come up and have been successful a lot a large part of them have been done by entrepreneurs who do not traditionally come from real estate development background uh, and we've seen this probably with selectory walk in delhi we've seen this with Uh, Atul Roy of Palate when he built the Phoenix Market City he came from a textile family background a uh, first mall development we saw with Arjun when he built uh, from a travel hospitality industry gone into real estate and built first development was a mall we saw that with uh, Rahul Saraf uh, who come from a cement business essentially some real estate development but essentially was not and built the first mall for the city as well so we've seen this story uh, there the Express Avenue mall in Chennai uh, as well where it's not been the core business uh, but we've seen also is that the journey has not been so easy for them as well uh, did you face any specific challenges had you come from a real estate background you may not have faced it because you were coming from a different background uh, like rather from uh, engaging and understanding how to build the mall uh, how to choose a contractor construction leasing strategy how was, how how did you put it together uh, uh, well um I was fortunate to um a we had a construction team in house because we were doing a lot of projects for our in house so we used to build factories and we used to build guest houses and we used to build offices and hotels and what not for our own in house uh, annual construction so we had some reasonable project management experience uh 
begin with. The one experience we did not have is how to get plans approved. Uh, that certainly, I think, had we been from the real estate background, it would have certainly helped. Uh, that naive, the naive uh, ness with which we approved, uh, with which we approached the whole process was, uh, in hindsight, it's quite hilarious, but uh, then was not funny. Uh, on the leasing, I think from the day one, we knew entertainment was a driver for the first center. And from on the second center, day one, we had leased actually 40% of our area before even getting the plans done uh, properly, uh, just on the conceptual drawing. So we had the anchors signed up on, because the relationships were there in place for the from the first center. However, we went through a huge struggle in the category mix. So we had JLL do a study for us. We had Knight Frank do a study for us. Um, we commissioned our own study in Nasik on the consumer wallet spends and how do they work. We understood from AC Nielsen nationally how does it work. And we were not convinced that anybody had it down to a science. Uh, the category zoning mix thing. Everybody had their own sort of logic to it, and everybody gave some recommendations, but the logic and the recommendations never added up. So we learned, I think, uh, we, are, we learned the hard way on what category mixes work in Nasik, what don't work in Nasik. One of the assumptions we had made, for example, was Nasik would be a value price market. And therefore, the whole mall was positioned around this whole value price segment. And that's why Big Bazaar was a tenant, uh, anchor tenant, and that's why West Side was anchor tenant. And we discovered that actually the higher end things sell better in our mall than the value price ones. Now. Because they want to come there. Uh, no, I mean the consumers are buying. Uh, you know, the more expensive things are selling better in our mall. Because they, when the customer comes into a mall, he has a thing that it's, I want to spend probably more premium. Otherwise, this I, is not available on high This street. is a Nasik I don't understand anymore. <laughs> to be honest, I've been supremely surprised uh, in a good way. And uh, we've also been surprised with how many people from outside Nasik come to shop. Uh, so on any given weekend, about 30% people come from outside Nasik to shop. Uh, and we do some huge footfalls. So again, those footfalls were also a shock to me. Uh, when, so this was a, this was the Nasik I didn't know. This was not a Nasik I grew up in, uh, in some ways, right? And uh, that, those were surprises for us on what will sell well, what will not sell well. Some churn had to happen because of that with tenants, and that was also not a nice thing because we are not used to that. I mean, I I come from a BD business where our oldest distributor I have personally worked with is a firm appointed in 1925. Uh, the current guy we still work with is, I think, 1928, the oldest guy we work with. Uh, and there are two, three generations on their end, two, three generations on our end. We are not used to sort of having this churn happen with partners. So you're putting in the polite way and saying, Retailers do not sometimes come in when they're supposed to come in. And then you have to go to some look for somebody also, else. Also, then they don't pay up when they're supposed to pay up. Then their business doesn't do well, but the footfalls are well. Then you start wondering, ki baju wala dukaan chal hai, aapka kyun chal hai? Uh, <laughs> These are dumb questions, nevertheless, but uh, uh, you know they lead to unpleasant <laughs> interactions sometimes. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Shri. Uh, you know, coming to uh, uh, Vishwamon, I wanted to get your perspective uh, is that a couple of years back, you suddenly came up, and I know we worked with you on that, and you said we're going to build a mall in Jabalpur. Uh, and I believe that the philosophy was that you wanted to give something to the city. For so, so was it only for that? And there was, what did you face locally as coming from a tier three city and putting in a mall in a tier three city where people would have typically would be traditional mindset would not go out of the house, uh, and would they start shopping in a mall? Was it easy uh, the journey putting it together and then making them convincing them to come out? Pankaj, the difficult part was convincing the people in Bombay and Delhi, not convincing the shoppers and the visitors to come into the mall. Uh, Sri Rang and I share sort of a similar background. We come from very old families of our respective towns. And we have a heritage, we have, uh, you know, the love of the people with us. And our families have given a lot to the city. So, for my generation, it was a kind of, uh, it was a business of course, but then again it was a kind of uh, contribution and a satisfaction of creating a landmark uh, property in the city, uh, architecturally beautiful product. Our family had, uh, has given a lot of architecturally beautiful buildings to the city over the last hundred years. So this was uh, sort of our contribution. On the business front of course, uh, 
we felt a dearth for entertainment that was the starting point uh, when we decided to do this mall there was only uh, three cinemas in the city and there were out of these three there was not a single one where we could go with our families to watch a movie so and that was the general view that came up and uh, it started off from there uh, when i used to come to bombay or go to delhi uh, i had to carry a map this was in 2005 2006 and show the retailers or whoever were in the business where jabalpur was and uh, you know create a city profile show them what was going on i agree with sri rang on the fact that uh, you know we had in 2009 2008 9 when our mall got ready for fit outs we had 100% default not a single sign up which we had done uh, honored the term sheet or agreement they had done with us we released the whole place again uh, we had a multiplex operator signed up he who knew there were no mul other multiplexes in the city there was a great demand for it still they had no money to put in and complete the property so we decided to do the multiplex also ourselves so we are running the multiplex ourselves we created our own brand and we are happy very happy we did that uh we have the best uh, shoppers in town uh we get the most premium displays like sri rang said uh, we tried with some local brands but ultimately we realized the more premium product or premium brand that we are getting into the mall that those are the people who are doing the best business uh we had a display of harley davidson bikes for two days in two days they sold two bikes uh we had the audi display in our mall and today audi is has uh, probably the second highest sale in jabalpur after indore so uh, these are the things we have also learned uh, operating the mall uh, during the last 3 or 4 years uh, one thing is for sure uh, whether it's the mall community or the retailer community we have to come up with a better way of ensuring that whatever is decided or signed it is honored uh coming to you um, mr mehboob uh, you built a first mall which is about 100000 square feet uh and coming from a business house which is always being linked residential uh and offices and what prompted you to get into re retail uh and what did you see in the opportunity of retail uh was always uh, building a residential product there in that market in calicut first uh, we were doing uh, residential uh, before uh, getting into the uh retail and uh, one thing you know, what which prompted is you know, we were looking for a uh, different uh, segments uh, and uh, um, at that time you know, we are doing fairly well in uh, residential and uh, to take the city into the next level or uh, see once the city's profile is up in you know, in the next level uh, we are the first beneficiary because um, it will automatically improve the uh, uh, demand in the residential sector and we thought of uh, you know but that was the one uh, major reason we want to you know upgrade the city profile that is the one uh, major thing uh, into and of course we will benefit out of that and uh, that way we started uh, um, um, this, uh, researching on uh, how we go about and uh, we started with a concept plan of uh, having a uh, retail come uh, commercial uh, uh building we met lot of people uh, uh from different part of the country a uh, lot of prospective uh, ten tenants and in that process we understand um since the location and the you know, property where which we have is uh, uh it's better to use 100% for retail instead of uh, commercial uh, considering that other aspects and uh, then concept going we changed from the concept plan of uh, mix uh, commercial uh, retail mix into fully retail the biggest challenge at that time was like uh, what vishu mohan uh, um, said um, selling the city people will like calicut they will normally now will they not understand oh calcutta no again i will have to correct it is not <laughs> calcutta it's uh, uh, somewhere in the south uh, it's uh, and again no, that map access everything has to do yeah, yeah. then uh, initial convincing was uh, 
little little now see selling the city initially was little difficult and people were asked no see in the metro we we were uh, first time into the kind of the residential is a different market and we are selling to the people who know the okay you know uh, us or who know the city everything like that but this is a different kind and people ask lot of uh, you know research or data that you know then uh, after convincing ourselves fully about the potential for convincing the retailers we need lot of data then <laughs> after uh, finalizing everything we again started uh, going back to the surveys or whatever exercise uh, to convince the retailers in that exercise uh, okay that uh, no, we also learned a lot in uh, that exercise then uh, 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 fixed uh, and the first tenants was you know uh, uh, spencers uh, signed with the hypermarket uh, they were strong at that time in uh, this thing and uh, this fashion angles you no know, they were uh, not that uh, uh, no no they were they don't know much about the kerala market and they were adverse, you know they were not uh, sure about that and we weighed lot of options uh, uh was said was, uh, uh, was uh, the brand in that segment we were considering at that time uh, max entered into india right. then the day one when i seen a report in the newspaper about the launching of the max uh, no then i thought you no know, this will be the best brand uh, for calicut and uh, i tried to contact the, them uh, immediately and uh, the reason you now my gut feeling he was see the brand is very popular in the middle east yes and, and there is uh, an affinity yeah, towards there is an affinity and uh, it, uh, without any advertisement or any branding max can launch a store in calicut and with word of mouth they will be able to that was my gut feeling and uh, then even without considering the you know much gap you know the rentals the offer in the rentals was uh, between the max and the next uh, option was no, without even looking into that it's a reasonable uh, considerable even without a uh, uh, low with a much no uh, percentage which is very huge loss in the rentals without considering that loss we went with the max and uh, there maybe 18000 around 20000 18000 square feet at that time was their biggest store in that time right. two or second or third uh, store in india and uh, um that way we brought in them then uh, um, all other odd easy was there at that time then uh, all other uh, madura garments you know they were a good they they having a very good presence in kerala that time they immediately you know they convinced uh, very immediately they signed the uh, beginning itself madura raima and so that brands and one way before six months before the opening i could uh, lease almost uh, 100% that was the uh, thing but uh, uh then uh, another thing in the mix see you know the smaller cities especially at that time uh, people you know, converting them into the organized uh, kind of place so there is a hesitant there uh, people think the price in the malls may be higher they are like uh, you no know, if you are providing ac escalators all these amenities uh, naturally the retailers you no know, we will be charging more rental and naturally retailers will charge more that was the perception at that time and to break that now we will have to bring local place we brought in the best uh, the ethnic uh, wear retailer best hoteler in the city into the mall uh, it has taken a uh, lot of persuasion or lot of uh, no, uh, it was not easy them to no make understand the mall system but uh, certainly that uh, bringing uh, local retailers or prominent lot of local retailers into the mall helps a lot to the break the barrier you know uh, absolutely uh, mr mabu what you we uh, realize it and you know what i can get a common theme between all three of you what are saying is that first uh, the tier 2 market or a tier 3 market uh, particularly when it's a first time developer who's going and building a mall and it's probably the first probable good quality mall which is likely to get built the first thing is you have to go sell the city first because uh, the bd head or the ceo of the brand who sitting in his office in delhi mumbai and bangalore uh, doesn't has never traveled to that city sometimes may not be even aware what whether it's calicut or Cal he can't make a difference between calicut and calcutta uh, and or a jabalpur uh, it's i think it's a strategy has to be very focused in saying first go sell the city and sometimes that's what we've seen is uh, when we work with a lot of developers is we straight get down to start selling the project is 
convince the retailer about the potential about that city, uh, why he should be there. Because I, when we work with the retailers on the Awan side, uh, and we fairly work with them to understand is what is their business plan. And we believe that they also have done their business models right. Uh, he's got a certain amount of expenditure to spend. Uh, he has to see if he has to put up 10 stores in, say, a given budgeted year. He will put it in the top best 10 locations where he thinks the feasibility will work out. Uh, so everybody is eyeing to see that out of those 10, can I get one? So really, I see that there's a common theme is that first, can, do not sell the story about the project or my soup location versus another mall location coming up in that city. I think as a model sponsor, we probably should you come from that city and you in that city seven generations. Mr. Vishwamohan's family has been there for ages in that city as well. Uh, same with Mr. Mehboob as well. They've been developing for a long time. The city identifies you all with that, uh, with your families per se as well. Uh, that you have to sell the city story first, get that base there, and the project will automatically flow in, uh, in terms of interest level will go in. Secondly, also what, uh, you know, the second thread which I picked up with each of you is that the lack of entertainment in your own specific cities prompted you to think towards a mall. So would you say that these are actually entertainment drivers and shopping happens by default? Or is it that when that was a th process you started with? Or is it that actually that it is still continued to be the same? It's a good so initially when we built our first center uh, 10 years ago, uh, entertainment was the driver. The multiplex was the driver, like Vish, you know, Vishwamohan said. Then is shopping the ent entertainment as well? Would you consider shopping also as entertainment? Yes, of course. Oh, they, I mean, so one of the things you will notice as a difference is people actually dress up to come to the mall uh, in a tier 2, tier 3 city. It's a family's day out. So even if there's one thing to be bought, the whole family will come together. Uh, so does that... If the thought process translate into the planning of the project as well, but you need to keep in mind when you're developing a mall in a tier two city, in saying it has to cater to the entire family. Oh yes, oh yes. So you you certainly have to make sure. Uh, so we actually worked out a grid, uh, a chart that time to say, what do we do for senior citizens at this time? So at every time zone, and for every type of profile, so senior citizens, uh, if your parents coming in, uh, what do you do for the uh, couple, what do you do for a housewife, a homemaker, what do you do for the kids and at different time, at different time uh, slots, what does the mall offer for them? And do we have any offering which is empty, is there a box which is unfilled, how do we fill it up? So it was not just about shopping for sure. Uh, I still think it is, today. even today our thought process is still not just about shopping. Uh, we worked with uh, Ashni Biani's uh, Future Ideas group quite a bit in the last uh, over the last number of months and maybe a, over a year and we've worked out a calendar uh, of events actually and we've worked out these I would say platforms of yeah events. you're telling me about it and I would and like I could, you to just go a little more detail for the group bit. so one event we are defining for example one platform is called a big consumption footfall driver so one of the thoughts we have today and we haven't cracked it yet is one of the thoughts is Shrad Paksh is the is a very low shopping season traditionally so we want to see if we can create a huge event on, on, on around discounting, around sales, around offers, across the mall, perhaps even going into the high street. Uh, but this is a big footfall event, for example. And like this, there are many other big footfall events. And this is an out and out commercial, transactional, shopping driven event. It's kind of borrowing the idea from the Sabse Bada, Sabse Sasta Din, 15th August, 26 January and so on. Uh, we are also looking at community events which happen every weekend where if there's a book launch happening it should happen in a mall, there's a poetry recital happening it should happen in a mall, if there's a street play happening it should happen in a mall, even if there's attended by 10 people, 20 people, 50 people, doesn't matter, it should happen in a mall. Uh, and they, we have a fair amount of these community events. We also have for example a farmer's bazaar now every Wednesday in our mall where farmers sell their vegetables and fresh uh, produce directly in our mall. Uh, we curate the, the the farmers, of course, and we make sure the right kind of farmers with the right kind of produce comes in is working really, really well. Uh, but this is again a community event for us. Yeah. And but and uh, traditionally, when I look at it like that, if I put this to a retailer, he'll say, oh, this is start, if you're going to start selling vegetables, it's going to compete in the hypermarket. How do the retailers accept these kind of events? Actually, the hypermarket does not do well on vegetables. 
the hypermarket does very well on pulses and grains on packaged foods and vegetables are a challenge so if we if we look at the shoppers today they will not buy the vegetables from the hypermarket or it some of them will buy but not a lot of them will buy and they will go outside to buy at the vendor so we said why can't we then convert this and why can't we get a different kind of people to come in so we are for example aiming to start a organic market now so it's a completely different crowd now there are no hypermarket has a organic supply chain uh we are local we can identify the farmers we can understand we can work with them we can sort of make sure they benefit right now we're not even charging the farmers at all not a single rupee uh we just want the the shoppers to get something uh the community to get something out of this another sort of events we are doing is the traditional and global festivals so it could be friendship day it could be holi it could be rakhi it could be anything but we are doing a so for example this holi we did a huge rain dance something like 4 500 youth showed up uh for four hours and there was a rain dance party happening in the mall uh now we don't really care about the numbers here if it's 50 people or 100 people or 200 people attending a event that doesn't matter there's a rhythm we worked out there's a huge calendar we worked out so i think in the month of may alone there are i think on an average four events every week uh three events every week and there's a huge calendar based on some rhythms that these platforms have and the other platform we have is there's a whole city wide festival we want to create for the whole city of nasik and there we are working with the larger associations the larger trade groups the jewelry association the kapda merchant the, the kirana bazaar and all of those to see can we create nasik on the you know on the lines of a dubai shopping festival for example uh and is there some can the mall become the centerpiece of that event uh and can the mall drive and the city drive consumption from the neighboring nasik has a very very strong agri agricultural economy i would say about 30% of our gdp comes from agriculture in nasik we are very good at grapes we, we grow about 40% of india's onions lots of uh, uh vegetables come to bombay lots of flowers we have a very 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 strong agriculture economy so we are saying how can we tap that economy and sort of so there's wealth there yeah. you just in, ensuring that they come and start spending some more time and, and give them a reason give them a reason. reason give them a deal give them a whole cities feel and so on uh, and then you make your mall as a kind of a centerpiece it may drive immediately a traffic may not but it registers a lot about your mall in the mind yes, of the customer 100% and then we are doing learning events a lot of every week a learning event and what is this kind of learning yes, event so it could be a live kitchen somebody to sh showing you how to cook it could be somebody showing you how to draw somebody showing you how to paint somebody whatever we don't care some learning event has to happen so there's a dedicated learning space we've carved out we have an amphitheater in the mall outside the mall actually not even in the mall outside the mall which we want we are now made it available free of charge to the community if they want to use it uh so lots of rallies get flagged off there lots of uh, awareness campaigns get flagged off there for the whole city you know so there's a nasik motocross event and it's a big event it's i think nationally ranked and a lot of big guys come if you follow motocross uh to that event and the the whole uh, mall has all these bikes parked and the drivers are there in the full headgear and their uniforms you can get an autograph you can get a photograph all of that uh so there's a lot of synergy that we see that that happens uh i think we are the new town center the village square whatever you call it and the one thing i want to highlight to your earlier point which is there's a lot of pride in the city about the city for all of us i think we share uh right one of the reasons we can go sell a city is there's a tremendous amount of pride uh in the work we do but also about the city uh and this is one other way to actually probably i suppose add value to the city is you become a hub for the city right you know a uh, lot of the time we've seen that uh, the projects get built you know conceive we have a conviction as developers we go build you get the right people to alongside with you as professionals whether outsource or internal and you build the center uh, and then afterwards when you it's built somewhere the steam gets lost how do you uh, vishwamun how do you seen in your center like in shirang's case they've really spending a lot of time and it's a lot of engagement and exercise uh, and you find that as well that you because it's a smaller city uh, you have to and it's a single center it's not a mall culture it's still growing and evolving and you know and we were talking about it earlier is that the people today in in typically uh, 
cities have a lot more time, so they will engage a lot more at home. Uh, they will cook at home. They'll get their families in, uh, and friends at home to eat than go them out and meet them at a restaurant. So how do you make sure that you keep the mall going? And do you think there's a big challenge and it's a regular uh, exercise which you have to do or is it there a formula that you do it once and it works well? No, of course not. Uh, there's always an effort involved in uh, doing the operations and uh, keeping the whole thing alive. I think a uh, mall is more like a like an organism, a living organism. It's not something like a building which you just make and you forget. So we've got uh, a process and a team which is there in place and which does the calendar of events and uh, we also try uh, to keep it alive. Of course, uh, ultimately by doing the events you can only add so much value. Your, uh, what kind of tenants you have, what kind of entertainment you are offering that is the main driver, of course, for for Jabalpur South Avenue Mall or for uh, you know for Nasik uh, City Center by Sri Rangs Group would have their own value, but ultimately the value is also significantly complemented by uh, w which are the retailers and which are the stores and entertainment centers that we have within that mall. Uh, well, as I said earlier, the stronger the brands, the newer the brands that we got in, the better were the results. And ultimately, we started uh, doing, making a lot of efforts in getting stronger brands in. Like for example, uh, for KFC or for Domino's, we had to spend almost six to eight months to convince them to get in. But we realized that, uh, you know, they will have, they will see a huge potential and now we have been doing uh, the deals with at least a three to five year exclusivity with all these brands. So I have brands which cannot open a store anywhere else in the city for three years once they come to us. So that makes our shopping center exclusive. So if someone wants to go shop for a particular brand, he has relatively no other option in a you know 200 kilometer radius at present. He'll have to come to my mall. Uh, Mr. Mubu, one big aspect in brief, uh, when we meet up with a lot of developers, particularly who are uh, into all sphere of real estate development, like residential, retail, offices, hotels, uh, is is the challenge of financing these projects. Uh, is because uh, convincing probably the bankers in today's day and age were to finance a re retail project uh, as one aspect is a challenge for them. Uh, how do you tackle that? Uh, secondly is once you've built it, how do you make value uh, in terms of achieving does does it is it a sustainable business model financially or developers are today forced still to go back the traditional way to go and sell strata shops to finance that project in our case and all since we are uh, from the uh, real estate background uh, with our track record and uh, experience in this industry um, even uh, funding was not that big issue in our case. And uh, in our model, we do sell a smaller part of the mall, uh, mall, mall and uh, in, in turn we will manage that. So and, and how do you tackle that? Because I've always heard that, uh, you know, uh, strata sold, uh, sold malls don't work. Is there a model which you worked out no, see, in which uh, making yeah. it, how do you make it work? See, last uh, this focus mall in Calicut, that uh, here the uh, majority we sold, not like. Second one we are holding, uh, majority we are holding. Then uh, uh, the, our investors basically, the difference may be the cat category of investors. Investors basically our uh, previous cli clients or uh, no, uh, clients from the residential segment, they want some regular income uh, kind of thing. It's like a fund, uh, no, different, different form of a fund. Uh, so they don't we, take come active and saying, no, they, I will lease my shop yeah, to this brand nothing, or no? They are, most of um, uh, the maybe um, uh, there are people uh, he, who don't know where it exactly, but uh, no, uh, they, they have not even identified the specific shop. They know the brand, what is there, and uh, but see, they rely on us, and uh, we are managing 100%. And uh, the mall, the thing is, the system, it, the system should be like that. Mall should work as a single entity. There should not be 
uh, it should not work differently. We are leasing 100% when the replacement comes based on the requirement, based on the, and see, actually, if there is no, no, some tenant has to churn out every year. Otherwise, we will not be able to bring new tenants. Uh, new tenants. In that process, 100% is done by the mall management only. And uh, that way, uh, see, it's working as a single entity and absolutely no problem uh, in that trend. It's around uh, it's getting seventh year, you know, it's almost seventh year now. Absolutely no problem and it's 100% uh, leased. Okay. And uh, t no, t uh, retailers also, see the major retailers, uh, they are very happy on that system and, and almost all the major retail uh, is there. They followed us into the second one uh, because the system, uh, they accepted that. And other way, see the problem why, you know, without, uh, you know, in other model, uh, like what you mentioned, uh, ROI or, uh, you know, see, uh, factor is a bit difficult in the, or, you know, we have to, uh, you know, spend a lot or, you know, holding so much money in that, you no, know, that will affect the growth, uh, you know, in of the, the total organization, uh, yeah. organization's growth. So, uh, what I can deduce, uh, uh, Mr. Mabub is, there is a way for the strata sold malls as long the inter controlling entity has control on the asset and the investor is more like a passive investor like a you know like a mutual fund like we all invest in equity mutual funds or some of us do uh, where is the the fund manager actually takes the call like if i'm holding units of a mutual fund i can't go back to the reliance asset manager fund manager and say no no i don't like this fund uh, as equity uh, don't pick up this stock pick up that stock so but it's eventually, it's strata sold malls can work. Yes, there have been a lot of challenges. Uh, we believe that there have been a lot of challenges, but it's also the initiative or the involvement of the company, whether it's the right managing company or is the development owner of the company who's controlling the asset. Uh, it's nothing wrong because it's difficult. We do understand that there is a difficult uh, situation in India always to raise funds and retail it typically comes in the last of or preference of the asset classes for any developer or a finance uh, financer to finance a retail mall because uh, he doesn't see an exit or sometimes he sees that the sector is not so uh, strong compared to a residential sector. Uh, but as it said, it can work. There is a ways to raise finance uh, to liquidate the asset and still control on the asset and we've seen some success stories as well. Uh, Shirang, also one specific thing is that what is the outlook from a long-term perspective? Uh, would you go and build more malls or is it just that you build one happy, you're happy with one mall or the experience was like, we built it, not more, one more again? <laughs> we were happy to build the first one. We were happy to build the second one. Uh, the second one is when it was much larger. We dealt with far more people, uh, far more relationships, um, many more transactions. And the one thing... I mean, I don't mind building other ones. The one thing that really deters me is actually the transaction cost involved in doing any transaction in the mall. Whether it's leasing, whether it's recovery of payments, whether it's scam, whether it's electricity, even if it's municipality. I mean, I've never had so much litigation with municipality ever, I think, uh, or so much difference of opinion ever with a municipality as we've had since we've got in the mall business. So, so somehow this is a lightning rod for all the friction. Uh, there is. And that friction deters me. I mean, I don't know if I really want a big business with so much friction. I mean, it's a short life, really. Why do I want so much friction? Uh, so the friction deters me. Uh, otherwise, I think it's a business we understand well. It's a business I think we can scale well. It's a business we have actually really good processes uh, put into for scaling. We, we understand the catchments. I think we are wiser than we were five years ago and ten years ago. Uh, we would do this, but I think the friction is the number one sort of parameter, I think, to me, to deter from getting into this business. Uh, coming to back to you, Mr. Mehboob, and uh, when we talked, you said you built the first mall, it's been operational, we're building the second one. Uh, and do you see this as a continuous business to be into the mall space business? Certainly, yes. Uh, see, from the experience of the first... Uh, we could do things in a much better way in the second one. And anyway, we are into the real estate business. And uh, we see this segment is, uh, you know, if you are doing in a sustainable way, and, and now you know, it's become uh, first, uh, first, uh, no, most of the first uh, mall, uh, 
uh, retailers again uh, with the, the relationship part also improved a lot and i think uh, you know we hope to continue with this uh, um, retail segment with uh, other cities in kerala and uh, certainly we want to take it forward coming to you mr mohan is if i was to take the final summary of uh, in saying as an individual first time retail developer uh, what is your interest level still strong for retail what does it still excite you uh, and running the small is is it a very pa- you still take it as a very passionate business or is it one part of your business which will always be there well it is uh, one part of the business which is going to be there uh, it cannot be uh, the bread and butter that's for sure but it can be something uh, that we've done for our cities and probably uh, later in our life or our children will get the benefit of it having said that i do see that there has been a significant drop in the interest in retail development in uh, all over the country and especially in tier 2 cities so we do see an opportunity uh, and we are trying to develop a model which is more workable we had some talks of uh, mixed use development so that's where we are going where we plan a mall as part of a township and uh, where it complements the township and one thing we have definitely learned is when you are doing a retail development a mall development you have to go into it with a significantly longer time frame horizon in mind than you go into a residential development with that is the primary learning and uh, you need to have your backup plans and you need to uh, develop that relationship with the retailers and keep nurturing it that's our learning thank you thank you vishwa uh, so uh, before we close the session if we could happy to take uh, if any of you would like any questions from the panelists uh, they happy to take any questions uh, my name is abhishek uh, bansal um, we run pacific mall uh, we have one in dehradun also we just opened in august uh we were discussing about uh the price differentiation on the high street at the outlets versus the mall and uh what we have noticed in the smaller cities uh, is that people do think ki ac chal raha hai to mehanga hoga ye aap se hi paise nikalne wale hain ya uh, itni facilities hain to mehanga hoga it might not be true but have any of you done any study which tells you that yes the the market price of a certain product is the same on the high street as well as the mall are we are we absolutely sure about that and and also i would add to abhishek's question is if you discovered it then how do you tackle and get the customer in i think the the bigger question is have we been able to discover it and be sure about it that yes the the value of that particular puma t-shirt in the high street shop is equal to your center we haven't compared we haven't heard any problems either i mean we actually rely on the brands to keep that parity for the first time only last week i heard a customer uh who i bumped into say that ye nike ka this same product delhi mein 30% off mein nasik mein nahi hai so i was like really aise kaise ho sakta hai uh and he saying nahi hai pakka hai and then the nike guy explained ki sir ho sakta hai so theek hai ho sakta hai uh, the, the bigger problem is having differential within the same city no i understand so we haven't tracked that what we do track is we track trading density for every retailer we try to work with them to get the trading density up and if the trading density is down we try to understand why is it down so instead of tracking a price of every merchandise they could conceivably sell what we try and see is are they doing well on the business and if they are not doing well on the business let's understand why not okay what we did a bit of study on this and uh, we talked to a few customers as well uh, normally on the high street in the in the smaller cities the, the shops are being run by franchisees local franchisees and when you open a center there could be situations when the shops in the mall are being run by companies directly i mean it's a mix it's a mix but uh, there are some companies some franchises and the franchises on the high street might give away 5% of their margin to the customer ke uncle ji aap to roz aate ho 5% le lo you know falana falana that relationship 
cost of uh, the retailer. Mm -hmm. Now that uh, now that is not happening at our mall. So f for all the convenience that we provide, the customer still likes that five percent. I can share something here. Uh, we are quite sure we do not want a franchisee in the mall who is not going to be himself present in the shop. So while we are leasing, we want to understand who is going to run the shop. Uh, and is it a, so it may not be the, you know, it's a, different retailers have different structures. Some of them have this notion of master franchisee. So they have a two tier, three tier structure. Uh, they have their own reasons to do so. But what we do understand is who is going to man the shop and is he a, some sort of an owner or not? Uh, does he have ownership incentives or not? Uh, we have really bastardized the, the structure of franchising in India. I mean, franchising globally is about a structure where you want a manager there, you want brand standards followed there, but you also want owner-like incentives there uh, to the guy operating there. And that's how globally franchising is a is 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 a midpoint between having an outrightly owned store versus having a channel partner store. It's a midpoint between that, right? We have not really followed that because we see this, especially in the food outlets, if the owner, if somebody there is not standing uh, to monitor standards of hygiene and food quality, it doesn't do well, no matter what brand you put on it. Uh, so unless it's a Domino's which has completely figured out the supply chain, unless it's a McDonald's that has completely standardized their processing and supply chain and everything, most other food retailers don't do that. So one thing we've learned for sure to combat this, and our success stories actually have been people who have, th there are people in our mall who have five stores, different brands, same franchisee, but the guy's there in the mall all day. Uh, and that works really well. It doesn't matter what the brand is. The, it, so we actually look at the operator and the retailer more than the brand. And that's what we've learned. It's the same way we did our BD business. We're now figuring out the same principles operate here. You want to look at the guy more than his shop, more than his size, more than his turnover. You want to look at his interest, uh, his passion, his commitment, more than anything else. Uh, and that's what we found gets, I mean, 90% of the problems solved. How much of you can? How much of it can you control? I mean, when you're signing, for example, a Madura brand, yeah. I am not sure if you can tell Madura that you know this is the franchisee I want you to give the franchise. Actually, they ask us, could you recommend a franchisee? Most of the times, even so if they don't. Basically, it goes beyond leasing. Then you got to get a franchisee for them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, of course. Oh, we do that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that is you have to do. I mean, at least we have done this all the time in Nasik. We've done this marriage bureau kind of sorts, right? where you get the uh, local guy and the company introduced to each other and they sort of get to know each other. We do this all the time actually. Our and guys you, do this. And you don't have franchisees from Delhi or Bombay operate in There are Indian master franchisees, they are operating and we don't have a great experience with them. It's a mess. Uh, in fact, there's one couple of churns we are hoping to happen, not with the brand but with the franchisee to say. So we another thing we insisted on is we insisted on signing with the brand and not with the franchisee. Uh, and most of the times we get away with it. Uh, that helps us, that gives us leverage with the brand uh, because they are the tenants on record and not the franchisee. Uh, that helps us. But we certainly look at who's the local guy who's going to do this. Who relationship hoti hai na. Aap pooch sakte ho kaun hai, kya hai, kaun karne wala hai. And that's easy. Uh, that makes, that solved 90% of our problems actually on trading density and the shop not doing well. I uh, forget. Uh, one, one quick uh, second question was, how many common brands do you have on the high street and the mall? So if you have 100 brands, are there 50 brands which are common to high street and the mall or 75 brands and 25 are new? Well, I think that ultimately depends on how you are doing your leasing. Well, initially when we did the leasing, we had a lot of common brands and that sort of resulted in some conflicts which you were mentioning. As we progressed, we have, as I said earlier, we have uh, started doing uh, exclusive arrangements with the brand. We try to get in the brands which are not there in the city at present and we do an exclusive deal with them that for a certain period they are not going to open on the high street. Earlier, some brands that were there in the mall as well as on the high streets, we have seen uh, uh, quite a few of them close their stores on the high street and just retain the stores in the mall. Uh, How much time did that take? 
Sorry. Your, uh, how much time did that take after your mall opened? Uh, well, for different brands, it was, uh, I think, a different period. Whatever these terms they must have had on the high street, I think that governed their decision. But uh, on one point that Srirang also said that we face, the main issue that we face with the retailers is not what is available or what is the price on the high street versus what is the price in the mall. What we face is what is available in the store in Jabalpur in our mall versus what is available in the store in say a Pune or a Bombay or a Delhi. That is what, because of uh, the television and the social media, Everyone is aware of what is happening. A youngster exactly knows what is the trend, what is selling at the store in Bombay and they want the same thing in Jabalpur. That is uh, what is important and that is where we have to really uh, push the brands to ensure that they have the latest stuff there. Uh, Thank you. Abhishek, I'll add to that is and what Vishwa said. And we were doing this uh, study for a mall in Guwahati and this was supposed to be the first mall. And we said, what works in that mall? And we went to the most prominent high street there called GS Road. And in one GS Road, which is about two or three kilometers, there was four Levi's stores. So we couldn't figure it out. How could four Levi's stores survive on the same road? And we walked into each of them. And obviously, we understood that the population there was younger. They are more Western, you know, and we know that the music culture is they are, they are more you know, they're more Western in their approach than many other markets, but we still wanted to see. What we realized is that the differentiation in the Levi's four stores was there in the product itself. In one of the stores was a merchandise which was really outdated uh, and it was being sold at a discount. And in, but it, it would look like a full price store. Uh, in one store, the because you could check the label of the date of manufacture and we just, you know, try to flip it. In one or two stores was really is actually there was higher value merchandise available. There was a jeans of three and a half, four thousand. But in three other stores, there was not there. And in the same market, there was a differentiation with the franchise he was doing. So I think the trick probably lies as well is in terms of saying what merchandising is being done in that store. Is that unique or not? Or maybe it is the franchisee who's running the outlet. It's yeah. his interest yeah. level that, you know, what Absolutely. is he getting in? Yeah. Which, so which also, means, which also means in Dehradun what we've noticed is that it is not necessary that you get the current season, the current season clothing into your store. It could be maybe a two month or last year's stock which is being sent to smaller cities by brands too dilute. Does that happen? Yeah, does th that does happen as well. And we've seen this across spectrum, even from luxury to regular retail. Even in luxury retail, for example, in India, just to give you a cue, uh, brands, uh, customers have come back and given feedback and saying, you don't have the latest. When I can go back to Bangkok or Singapore or Milan and buy the latest, why would I think? And he says the sales are not so much, he's not ordering so much. The same thing is with the franchise as well. So the partner has to be strong enough to see that the local guy is got the word with all to actually stand a longer period of time and invest in this business to stock up regularly with the latest merchandise. Otherwise, they don't order the merchandise only, what we find. Just one more thing I'd add is many times the stores are not well run. The merchandise may be there, the price may be at parity, but they're just not well run stores. So the sales staff is not available, they're not polite, things are not clean. Um, some basic operating issues are there. And we try to work with the brands and give them feedback to the local managers and sometimes to their non-local uh, offices as well to say ki your your store, we went in and we found these 10 things, please fix them, it'll improve your business. Uh, and many times the, it's the agency problem, right? It's the oldest problem in economics. It's the principal and the agent have different incentives. Uh, and they don't have the same compulsions. And we find we added, we could add value by doing training programs for the staff of retailers and doing an inspection program for all the retailer stores. Uh, incredibly enough, that, that added value. Uh, despite the brand standards in place, despite everything in place.